Hello world, Liu here, and today let's talk about 7 things I never knew about dictionaries in Python until recent years. Number 1, we can use the double star to combine dictionaries. So here, let's create two dictionaries. D1 is equals to A1 and B2. And next, D2 is equals to C3 and D4. And next, let's say we want to combine D1 and D2 to get another dictionary containing everything in D1 and everything in D2. So we can actually do it like this. So D3 is equals to curly brackets. And here we have double star D1, comma, and double star D2. And if we print D3, we will get A1, D2, C3, and D4. And notice that it has everything that D1 has and everything that D2 has. So here, putting a double star in front of a dictionary in a way allows us to expand that dictionary into whatever other container that we put it in. And this works no matter how many dictionaries that we have. So let's say we have another D4 is equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And at the end of the dictionary here, let's add a comma and a double star, D4. And if we run this, we will get this result where 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6 from D4 has been added into D3. Number 2, dictionary.get. So let's say we have a dictionary containing apple pointing to 4 and orange pointing to 5. And usually, if we want to access a key, we simply do this D apple. And if we run this, we'll get 4. However, what if we try to index a key that does not exist inside the dictionary? So let's say pineapple. So here, D only contains apple and orange and not pineapple. So if we try to do this, we will simply get a key error. And here we have it, key error, pineapple. And this happens because pineapple is not an existing key inside D currently. So one potential issue about indexing keys is that this could unintentionally stop your code. And so, if you do not want a key error to stop your code prematurely, you can actually use the get method. So here, instead of using these square brackets, I'm going to replace it with dot get and normal bracket. So here, the dot get method will actually do the same thing as our indexing, except that it will not give us an error if the key does not exist. So right now, we are trying to get pineapple, but since pineapple does not exist, Instead of giving us a key error, the dot get method will simply give us a none. So if we run this, we will get none. So this is useful if you do not want random key errors in your code to suddenly stop it. And for myself, I usually find this the most useful when I'm web scripting or running some script that will take super long to run. So another thing about get is that we can set a default value. So let's say I add a comma and a 100 here. So this 100 means that this is the default value that I will get if the key does not exist. So if I run this again, I'm going to get 100. However, if I choose to pass in a key that will exist, and if I run this again, I will get 4, which is the value of Apple. Number 3, the dictionary.update method. So once again, let's say we have two dictionaries, D1 and D2. And next, we want to add every key value pair in D2 into D1. So the traditional way that we can do this is using a for loop. So for key in D2, D1 key is equals to D2 key. And if we print D1 afterwards, we will get this. So notice that every value in D2 has been added to D1. However, there is actually a one-liner shorter way that we can do this. So instead of using a for loop, we use the update method. So D1, update, D2. And if we run this again, we'll get the same result. So here, the update method will simply take everything in D2 and add it into D1. And so we have no longer any need to write a for loop to do this. Number four, mapping proxies, which are immutable dictionaries. So to start off, let's create a class. So class dot and let's just do define bug self and print oof 
So here, I've just created a random dot class. And next, if I do this, I print the class dot with a capital D, dot double underscore D-I-C-T double underscore. So if I print this, I will get this thing. However, if I print its type, so type of dot class dot underscore div. If I print the type, I'm going to get class mapping proxy. So here, a mapping proxy is essentially a dictionary that is immutable, meaning that we cannot change it after we create it. So let's try this. And let's say buck is equals to lambda something else. Print meow. And if I attempt to run this, I'm going to get an error. So here, a mapping proxy object does not support item assignment, which just means that we cannot change anything inside the mapping proxy. And here, a dig object of a class itself is designed to be a mapping proxy because they don't want us to randomly change the stuff inside a class. Conversely, if I define a dog object and if I print the dig dot underscore dig, I will get a normal dictionary instead. So here, note that a class's dig object is a mapping proxy, but an object's dig object is a normal dictionary. Number five, dot keys, dot values, and dot items. So let's say we have a dictionary. So apple pointing to four, orange pointing to five, and pear pointing to six. And we want to iterate over this dictionary. So to do this, we can use the dot keys, dot values, and dot items depending on what kind of thing we want to iterate through. So let's say we want to get all the keys inside the dictionary. So for k in d dot keys and colon, we print k. And if we run this, we'll get apple, orange, and pear. So notice that these are the keys inside the dictionary. However, if we want the values, we can replace this with dot values. So let's just replace this with v and this with v. And if we run this, we'll get the values 4, 5, and 6. If we want both the key and value at the same time, we can use dot items. So for k, comma, v in d dot items. And let's print k and v at the same time. So if we run this, we'll get apple 4, orange 5, and pear 6. So notice that both keys and values are generated at every iteration. Number six, a faster way to type out a dictionary. So let's say I want to create my normal dictionary, apple pointing to four, orange pointing to five, and pear pointing to six. And let's add a few more fruits, pineapple pointing to seven, and durian pointing to eight. So as you can see, that was quite a handful to type. But there's actually another way to do this, especially if your keys are strings. So here, I'm going to create D2 is equals to D-I-C-T, open and close bracket. So apple equals to 4, orange is equals to 5, pear is equals to 6, pineapple is equals to 7, and durian is equals to 8. So if I print D and D2 one after another, you'll notice that they are actually the same dictionary. So here, because our keys contain strings, we have to keep typing the code characters. However, if we choose to use the second method, we don't have to type the code characters and we can type a lot faster. So note that when I say faster, I mean our typing speed. This does not necessarily mean that your dictionary will be created more efficiently or faster in a coding sense. Number seven, dictionary dot from keys. So let's say I have a random list of fruits is equals to orange pear. And let's say I want to create a dictionary from this. And I want to get something like apple is equals to zero, some default value. Orange is equals to zero, which is also the same default value. And pear is equals to zero, the same default value. So one way I can do this is I can choose to use list comprehension. So let's say D is equals to F for F in fruits. And F will point to zero. And if I print D, I'll get apple pointing to zero, orange pointing to zero, and pear also pointing to zero. 
However, there's actually an easier way to do this. So D is equals to DICT from keys fruits zero. So if I run this, I'm going to get the same output. So essentially, the from keys method will take in some iterable, usually a list, and it'll create a dictionary with many of the same default values. And in our case, we put zero. However, if we want to put 10, we can. And all the values in our dictionary will simply be the default value 10. So this is useful if we don't want to deal with dictionary comprehension. So thanks for watching and hopefully you have learned at least one new thing about Python dictionaries today. See you in the next one.